Miller's Shadows, Marilyn, Plays, and Paradoxes. Dive into the enigmatic life of Arthur Miller, a man whose literary genius was matched by a life rife with complexity and controversy. This exploration uncovers 10 striking facts about Miller, painting a vivid picture of a playwright whose personal narrative was as compelling and intricate as his theatrical masterpieces. From his turbulent relationship with Marilyn Monroe to his defiant stand during the McCarthy era, uncover the hidden layers of a man who shaped American theater and culture. Fact number one. Humble beginnings amidst financial ruin. Arthur Miller, born on October 17, 1915, in Harlem, New York City, was the second of three children in a Jewish family. His father, Isidore Miller, owned a successful coat manufacturing business, and his mother, Augusta Miller, was a schoolteacher. The family lived in comfort and prosperity until the Wall Street crash of 1929, which triggered the Great Depression. This catastrophic event had a profound impact on Miller's life and future works. The Miller family, like many others, suffered severe financial hardship. They lost their business and had to move from Manhattan to Brooklyn. These early experiences of financial ruin and struggle for survival deeply influenced Miller's perspective on the American dream and societal values. This theme is vividly depicted in his most famous play, Death of a Salesman, 1949, which portrays the life of Willie Loman, a traveling salesman facing disillusionment and failure at the end of his career. The play reflects the instability and uncertainty of the American dream, echoing Miller's personal experiences during the economic turmoil of the 1920s and 1930s. Number 2. The University of Michigan's Crucial Role Arthur Miller attended the University of Michigan from 1934 to 1938. Initially, he enrolled in a journalism program but soon developed a strong interest in drama. His time at the university was a turning point in his career. Miller's playwriting talent blossomed here, significantly influenced by Professor Kenneth Rowe, a renowned figure in playwriting and drama education. Rowe's mentorship was instrumental in shaping Miller's dramatic style and understanding of the theater. During his university years, Miller wrote several plays, demonstrating his growing prowess as a playwright. Notably, he won the Avery Hopwood Award for his play No Villain in 1936, which explored themes of personal integrity and familial pressure during the Great Depression. This early success was a harbinger of his future achievements in theater. His experiences at the University of Michigan provided Miller with both the technical skills and the creative inspiration that fueled his later success as one of the 20th century's most significant playwrights. Number 3. Defiance During the Red Scare In the 1950s, Arthur Miller took a bold stand against the House Un-American Activities Committee WAC, which was investigating alleged communist influences in America, particularly in the arts. Miller, already a prominent playwright with works like The Crucible, Critiquing McCarthyism, was summoned by the WAC in 1956. He refused to name individuals who had been involved in communist activities, leading to his conviction for contempt of Congress. This conviction was later overturned in 1958 due to procedural errors. Miller's defiance became a symbol of resistance against the anti-communist hysteria of the era, and his experiences during this time deeply influenced his work, including The Crucible. Number 4. Marriage to Marilyn Monroe Arthur Miller's 1956 marriage to Marilyn Monroe was a notable union between the literary world and Hollywood's glitz. This marriage happened shortly after Monroe converted to Judaism and Miller's divorce. Their relationship, while troubled by Monroe's mental health struggles and Miller's political pressures, had moments of profound connection. An interesting aspect of their life together was Miller's involvement in shaping Monroe's public image and career. He actively supported her desire for more serious acting roles, moving away from the blonde bombshell stereotype. Miller's screenplay for The Misfits, 1961, was a testament to this, written specifically for Monroe to showcase her dramatic talent. However, the stress of these changes, combined with their personal challenges, strained their relationship. Monroe's tragic death in 1962 followed shortly after their separation, marking a poignant end to this chapter of their lives. Number 5. Turbulent End of Marriage with Monroe Arthur Miller and Marilyn Monroe's marriage, 
which began in 1956, ended in divorce in 1961 amidst considerable public scrutiny and personal challenges. During their marriage, Miller's creative output notably diminished, as he found himself deeply involved in Monroe's complex personal struggles, including her mental health issues and the challenges of fame. The media's relentless attention added to the strain, making it difficult for Miller to focus on his writing. The stress of this period was further compounded by the troubled production of The Misfits, a film for which Miller wrote the screenplay specifically for Monroe. This period marked a significant slowdown in Miller's career as a playwright, with few notable works produced during these years. Their divorce in 1961 brought an end to this intense and public chapter in Miller's life, which had a profound impact on his personal and professional life. Number 6. Witty and Humorous Anecdotes Arthur Miller, known for his serious and dramatic works, also had a humorous side, especially in his personal life. A memorable incident occurred with Marilyn Monroe during their marriage. Concerned about bathroom privacy, Monroe would turn on the faucet to mask any sounds. This habit led to a humorous and rather candid observation from Miller's mother, who once commented, a wonderful girl. But she pisses like a horse. This remark highlights the lighthearted and candid moments in Miller and Monroe's relationship, providing a contrast to their often publicized personal struggles. It also reveals a more relatable and human side to their lives, showcasing Miller's ability to appreciate humor in everyday situations. Number 7. Second Marriage and New Beginnings Arthur Miller's second marriage was to photographer Inga Morath, whom he met in 1960 on the set of The Misfits. They married in February 1962, shortly after his divorce from Marilyn Monroe. This marriage, lasting until Morath's death in 2002, was characterized by a deep personal and creative partnership. Morath's photography often complemented Miller's literary works, and their collaboration extended into their family life with two children. This period was marked by stability and productivity for Miller, a stark contrast to his tumultuous previous marriage. Number 8. Arthur Miller's Notable Achievements Arthur Miller's career is highlighted by significant accolades, including the Pulitzer Prize for Drama and the Tony Award for Best Play Ford Death of a Salesman, 1949. His play The Crucible, 1953, also won a Tony Award and remains a critical commentary on McCarthyism. Other successes include All My Sons, 1947, which won the New York Drama Critics Circle Award, and A View from the Bridge, 1955, receiving multiple Tony nominations. Internationally, he was honored with the Prince of Asturias Award for Literature in 2002 and the Jerusalem Prize in 2003. Number 9. Kenneth Rowe, Mentor and Friend At the University of Michigan, Arthur Miller was profoundly influenced by Professor Kenneth Thorpe Rowe, a respected figure in American drama and playwriting. Rowe's mentorship during Miller's university years, from 1934 to 1938, played a crucial role in his development as a playwright. Rowe's practical approach to drama, emphasizing the structural aspects of playwriting and the effectiveness of staging, greatly shaped Miller's early works. Under Rowe's guidance, Miller honed his skills in narrative structure, character development, and dialogue. This mentorship was instrumental in Miller's early successes, including his victory in the university's Avery Hopwood Awards for his play No Villain, which affirmed his potential and set the foundation for his later career. Number 10. Arthur Miller and his son Daniel. Arthur Miller faced controversy regarding his personal life, particularly concerning his son, Daniel. Born with Down syndrome in 1966, Daniel was institutionalized shortly after his birth, reportedly spending about 40 years in a home for individuals with disabilities. This decision, made at a time when such practices were more common, has been a subject of scrutiny and criticism in discussions about Miller's life. The nature of Miller's relationship and interaction with Daniel during those years has been a topic of debate among biographers and critics.